Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry Instagram and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 4th of January, 2016, and this is episode 162. Hello, 2016. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. How was your week? Mine was pretty good. It was the second week of winter break for my son, and... I'm so glad that he went back to school this morning. I, I love having him around, and Mara loves having him around. That's my daughter. But um, it was time for them to have separate space. They, they play really well together, but they also argue, as siblings do. So it's much quieter today. Also... Mara will play pretty quietly by herself, usually. Right now she's chattering and you can probably hear that in the background. But um, she usually plays pretty quietly by herself. She draws and colors and plays with her dolls and does it all pretty quietly. But Gabriel is a very loud, rambunctious child. So I am enjoying the quiet. Anyway, anything else important? Hmm, I don't think so. I think that was it. back to school is the big thing this week. So I hope your week was good too. We had the ending and mending craft along finish up and um, there were not a ton of participants, but I wasn't very active either. So that's fine. I drew for the winner. And it was post 17, Sharby, who is Sharon Ann. Um, let me know what pattern you would like giftable through Ravelry up to $5 US, and I will get that to you immediately. The other craft along we have going on is the gift planning craft along. I talked about it at the end of last week's podcast because I forgot to talk about it at the beginning, but it's... um. As a craft along that's just going on for the month of January, there is a um, an official thread because it's not a finished objects thread. The way the craft along works is that it's not even so much a craft along as like a plan along sort of thing. You get one entry if you just list any gift knitting that you think you're going to do this year. It's as simple as that. If you know that you're going to make things for people, then just list what they are. And um, and that's one entry. And then you can get a second entry by making something off of that list. It has to be no more than 50% complete um, starting January 1st. So if you had one sock and you're making a pair of socks then that would be eligible. There is only one additional entry for finishing something. So if you finish three Christmas presents or birthday presents or whatever during January, that's awesome, but you only get to put in a second entry, not a second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. entry. That way, if people are making ornaments and someone else is making a blanket. It's kind of even. And the prize will be determined based on participation. So when we get closer to the end, I will let you know what it is. Maybe when I'm drawing the prize, I'll let you know what it is. Who knows? It is me we're talking about here. And although I like to plan ahead, I'm not very good at it occasionally, especially recently. So finished objects, I have one and I am super excited about it. I finished Jaws on December 31st. Are there 31 days in December? Whatever, the last day of December. I finished it with several hours to spare. Finished it sometime in the morning, I think. And here it is. I have a main skein, which is 502 yards. And then a skein spun from the leftover portion. This yarn was spun fractally, so I took it, I split it in half-ish. 
I think it was exactly in half by weight, but obviously spinning it has um, some variation. So I split it in half and I spun the first half straight. And then the second half I split into several pieces at seven maybe. And then I spun those. And I can't remember if this is the short color blocks or the long color blocks off the top of my head. I think it's the long color blocks that I had extra of. Um, So instead of leaving it attached, because sometimes when I'm spinning a fractal, but it's more of a, it's closer together. Um, what was that green that I did for Josh? It was a fractal, but it was green and brown. So the colors were closer together. Instead of breaking off the extra, I just, um, I just worked from the inside and outside of the leftover ply ball and kept it as one long skein. But since this is wildly different than this, I decided to break them up. And this one is 54 yards. So altogether that's 556 yards on that spin, which is not bad. It's a superwash merino from Spun Right Round, the colorway is Jaws. I spun and plied on spindles. I used, um, for plying, I used a supported spindle, actually, as a drop spindle for plying, and it worked out fine. And I'm so excited that it's finished. I love the yarn. The yarn is very lovely. I love the fiber content. I just, I don't know why it took me a bajillion years. I started it on August 1st, I want to say. <sighs> yeah, super long time on the spindle, but it's finished now and that's exciting. I have some works in progress. I'll show you the one that I'm currently knitting on as I'm talking to you. These are the socks for the kid at work. And let me get to the end of that part. Okay, so I'm in the middle of the needle part, but whatever. You can see. Fine. I made it through the heel flap. I don't remember where I was last week. I think I was still on the ribbing for the cuff, but maybe not. So I did heel flap and a heel turn through the gussets, and I'm working down the foot. And it measures about palm length. I need to get to fingertip length before I start the toe. And I'm not going to do the shortened toe that I use on my own socks because his feet are longer than mine. I am going to use um, like a regular wedge shape style toe to give it the extra length that it needs. The yarn that I'm using is Drops Fable. I don't remember the colorway. It's, on, it's in my stash probably. I misplaced the tags, but they are moving along. They're excellent work knitting because it's just two by two rib on the top and then stocking it on the bottom. It was two by two rib for the leg and cuff. He requested short socks when I asked him like what length of socks he wears and totally knit worthy. He came in on New Year's Eve and he was with a couple friends who didn't work at the store, just whoever he was hanging out with that night. And um, I walked by and I heard him say, and that's Heather, she's making me these really cool socks. You're gonna be jealous. I don't think that's exactly what he said. But he did say, that's Heather, she's making me these socks, something. So it's, I'm pretty excited about that. And um, yeah, they're going pretty well. I also worked on, I started another pair of socks because, you know, it was New Year's Day and I needed new socks on the needles because there are knit-alongs that are happening during January for socks and they had to be new projects. So I started these. Not very far. I cast them on on New Year's Day and then I did, I don't know, two rounds because you know how I feel about casting things on. But I did the cast on and then I did the cuff on the second and I did one 
half of a pattern repeat yesterday and I'm going to do the second half of a pattern repeat today. You can't really see the pattern yet, um, but they're very cool. The pattern is called Tumbling Blocks Striped Socks by Leah Oakley and it's designed for self-striping yarn and it makes it it makes them look like blocks that are falling because it breaks up the stripes. It's a paid for pattern. It's not super expensive. And um, so far it's pretty comprehensive. I haven't read through the entire pattern because I pretty much never do. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do the um, the heel is written or if I'll substitute. I haven't decided. I might substitute like a fish lips kiss heel so that I can keep the stripes the same through the top of the sock because they're very cool. You might recognize this yarn as, um, I think I talked about on the podcast, I was going to make raptor socks out of this, but then I remembered that I had other very similar sock yarn, but with, um, different stripe, like the same, same colors, but different stripe widths that I think would work better for the Raptor because the Raptor has such long rows and these are such skinny stripes. The, um, the yellow and white and black are only two rounds or so worth of stitches. So that's only 120 stitches and the Raptor, the rows, because you knit it flat, I think. I think that's right. I don't know. I read it a long time ago. It's more than that in stitches or very, I don't know. It would be like maybe the stripe would get the entire length, but maybe not. So I decided not to go with this yarn for that. I'm working it on US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. Both socks are worked on that. And this yarn is Peyton's Croy Socks Stripes in the Spring Leaf Stripes colorway. So I look forward to showing you those blocks next week. They should be pretty cool. I worked on the blanket for Steve's mom and uh, not a ton of progress this week because I lost my crochet hook. Both of them. I had two crochet hooks out. And I misplaced one, so I pulled out the second, and then I found both of them, and they were both sitting on my desk, and then I misplaced one again, so I used the second, and then I misplaced the second. But this morning, I went to my basket, and I pulled out my very last one that is in my stash of size J, 6 millimeter hook. So hopefully I can hold on to this long enough to finish the blanket. The yarn is... Karen Simply Soft in Autumn Heather. No, Autumn Red. I keep wanting to call it Autumn Heather and I'm not sure why. It's Autumn Red. It's clearly not a heathered yarn. I'm probably crazy because the, um, the tumbling bo blocks and the, um, the blanket I want to have finished by the... 16th, I think. 14th. I don't know. In a couple weeks, I want to have them finished um, because I want to be handing them off to their new owners. Um, Steve's mom is taking the kids for a weekend and I am seeing Josh. So P.S. Josh, I just spoiled your birthday present. So I want to finish those two projects and I want to finish the spinning project police box blue which I'm spinning on the wheel which is right next to me I'll put in a picture so you can see it I am making decent progress on it although I am a little behind I didn't have any crafting time oh not 100 percent true I had very little crafting time on Saturday I went to a birthday party so I knit a little I did a lot of spinning on the um, Three Waters Farm Merino Tessa Silk blend. So it doesn't look like much on the spindle, right? But maybe you recall that last week the 
the spindle looked almost just like this, only the red was out to here. That's because I finished the first half of the spin. I told you I was spinning it thicker than I normally do. And those are the colors. It's so pretty. So I am on the first third of the second half, which is actually not a third. It's a little bit more than that. I started with the biggest ball that I had split from it. So I'm spinning that and I'm loving the spin so much. This fiber is so nice and soft and, um, and I was only spinning a few lengths a day until I finished jaws. And then I went to town on it because why not? Um, yeah, I'm really, really loving the spin. It's beautiful. It's a gray and with streaks of darker gray or black. And then it has bits of color, like it says. So there's red and brown. You can see that down at the bottom and then yellow and blue. It's very, very lovely. I'm very much enjoying the spin. And I think that will be finished pretty soon too, because I'm really, really enjoying it. And of course, spinning thicker goes more quickly than spinning very thin things. I have two other works in progress, but I'm going to talk about them at the end where I talk about my goals for the year. So we'll get back to those. I have modular knitting. Here is square number 11 on my green and blue mitered square blanket. It is um, Cyborg's Craft Room, a Socolate base in the impromptu dance party colorway. It looks familiar. It's because I made a barn raising square out of it last week. And then I made two hexapuffs using that same yarn. And I made eight hexapuffs total this week. I should have put another square on my blanket, but I didn't, which is fine. I don't have to put another square on my blanket. I just could have. Um, I also made this hexapuff and this is sport weight yarn. I actually started this hexapuff. Uh, I think this was in the first like 20 that I started, but then I realized that it was sport weight yarn and I only had little scraps of it. So I had this red sport weight and then this multicolor sport weight and this, um, this purpley sport weight. Actually, I don't even think I had that. I think it was just the red and the multicolor. And then I found just a tiny little scrap of purple. So I set it aside. I tied it onto it, but I was like, that's not going to finish off the, the hexapuff. And then I was going through random leftovers of yarn that I had around because my bag that sits on my desk with the, the little bits of yarn that I'm trying to use up for the hexapuffs before I break into the bigger stashes of yarn for hexapuffs. Um, I found blue sport weight, so I added that on. So this hexapuff has been on the needles for like a year and a half or something ridiculous. But now it's off the needles. I am used um, two scrappy bits for this one. These, these next four, well this one and the next four, are all with yarns from um, the first ZK or the second ZK. I can't remember, but they've been in my stash for a really long time. And I think most of them were used in my sock yarn blanket. No, I think all of them were used in my sock yarn blanket. So I don't know when I got them, but most of them came from Ginger. Although I think I saw one that was labeled from somebody else. This was a stroll tonal. I remember that from the tag. I don't remember what the other two are. I want to say online socks, but I'm not positive. They look very similar, but they were actually two different leftover bits. And I don't recall what this one is at all, but it is a celebratory hex puff. And I did the ridges where the colors changed for a little texture and a little fun. So that's eight. That brings me up to 442. Yay! I did not finish or even get very far on my mitered square 
it will be number, or not muttered square, barnerizing square. It will be number 55 when it's finished. This is, I don't know what this is. It's a leftover. And um, is it from my hat? Is it the Madeline Tosh from my string band hat? It might be. I think that might be what it is. I don't know the colorway. But that is what I'm using right now. And the reason why it's not finished is I actually picked out a different yarn to use for my barn racing square this week. And I put it in a um, my black project bag, the, the formula one. I put it in there with needles and then I went to visit my friend Becca and I think that it fell out of my bag at her house. I haven't asked her yet to confirm because I just came to that realization last night after I got home from work when I was like looking around my craft room to be like where did I possibly put it and then I remembered that I had packed up all of my stuff to go to Becca's house. So I think that it's probably there. And I didn't start the square until last night because I was looking for those needles and that yarn. So I'll finish this one and do another one this week so that I can be on track. I am still coloring my coloring book, but not very much this week. It's been really dark here and, um, oh, si okay, I got sidetracked. And I was saying something about knitting time and why I didn't have a lot of knitting time on Saturday or work doing time on Saturday. Um, it's because I went to a party, so I knit a little and then I, um, I came home and ate some food and was getting settled when I got a call from work saying, Hey, can you come in early? And I said, well, sure, how early do you need me to come in? And they said, well, now-ish would be good if you can. And I said, oh, okay. So all of the things that I had planned for the um, four and a half hours in between the party, getting home from the party and leaving for work, I couldn't do. So not a lot of crafting time. I don't know why I was telling you that, but I do remember I was telling you that at some point. Um, coloring book again. It's I haven't had a lot of daytime, daylight time, and I can color using a lamp, but I would prefer to do it with natural lighting because then I can really see what the colors look like. But I did work on the one picture, much to um, Gabriel's sadness that I'm still on that same picture because he would like to color again and he's not allowed to color on that one. I've been reading still. Well, I actually haven't been reading very much. I p probably picked up Kushiel Start one night because I've been very tired. And then um, I haven't been listening to the audiobook in my vehicle at all because it's been all very short turnaround time. Like, it's a five minute drive to work. And I could listen to an audiobook for those five minutes there and five minutes back, which would get me 10 minutes of listening a day. But that leaves the story very disjointed. Um, what I have been doing is listening to the Dresden Files on audiobook. So I finished Stormfront. I finished Full, Full Moon, which is book number two. I finished Grave Peril, which is book number three. And now I'm on book number four, which is Summer Night. I just started that this morning, so I'm not very far. I'm very much enjoying the books as read by James Marsters. I didn't enjoy reading them in paper form as much as I enjoy listening to them. Obviously, I'm enjoying them since I listened to three of them in the last week. I haven't watched very many podcasts in the past week, but eh, whatever. I'll catch up. Um, what else? Ooh, resolutions. We're already at the end. So if you don't want to hear about my resolutions, have a good week. Otherwise, here we go. I have five. And they all seem pretty doable. I think I should be successful. The first is to knit four pairs of socks for myself this year. Because I gave away 
almost all of my hand knit socks because my feet have finally gone back to pre-pregnancy size. It only took five years. So I have, I think, three pair of hand knit socks that still fit. Um, the legless socks, the Kaime socks, and well, and my two pairs of thigh highs. I'm not giving those away. If I have to like do sock surgery and cut off toes and stuff for those, I will. But um, the other, I think there's another one. Oh, my cake. I'll cake if I want to socks. I still have those. I might have one or two other pairs, but I don't have very many. So four more pairs for myself, which will actually be difficult because I'm not great at making things for myself. But once a quarter sounds about right for me. I think that's my average rate of making things for myself. I had these bags next to me earlier and realized when I was editing that I forgot to talk about them on the podcast. So I would like your assistance in figuring out which pair of socks I will be knitting each quarter. But um, I'm not going to make it easy on anybody. I put these yarns in these four project bags on the first, so I don't remember which yarn is in which project bag, so I can't even help you there. Um, so you will vote on which project bag I should open. Probably not next week, probably in two weeks. Um, I need to finish at least one of these pairs of socks before I start a new one. But the options are Kitchen Counter Crafter Fox Bag, the Aqua Flowers Bag, Sewn by Lindsay Zombie Bag, or Sewn by Lindsay Tetrahedron Bag. There are there's one speckled yarn, at least two self-striping, but the other three might be self-striping. I can't remember. I don't even remember what yarn I pulled for myself. I remember three of the four, but vote in this week's episode thread and I will pick in probably two weeks. Not pick, I will reveal in two weeks what you all picked. I want to also make three pairs of cookie A socks, not necessarily for myself, maybe, but I'm not, um, I'm not committing to that. So I don't know if any of those patterns will be for myself or if they'll be part of gift knitting this year. I also want to make the Frodo socks from the Fellowship of the Sock ebook because it's the only pattern in the ebook that I haven't made. So I may as well make the last pattern, right? And then the two, my two other resolutions are um, tied to my works in progress. I want to, every month, I will, um, how do I want to say this? I don't even know. I had it written down at one point, but not in this notebook that I'm looking at. So every month I want to spend an hour working on, an hour a week working on two different projects. One will be a work in progress and one will be an ornament slash decoration sort of thing. So let's talk about decorations first. I want, I want to be that house that's super decorated, like not necessarily outside. I'm not particular about if my house looks fancy from outside for decorations, but like I want to have Christmas things hanging up and things on my Christmas tree. And I would like Halloween decorations in my house and, you know, maybe hanging in the windows and stuff. So I want all of those things. I just don't want to pay all of the money for all of those things. And I have supplies to make things. I have yarn, I have fabric. I, I mean, I'll have to put in a little bit to get new materials probably for certain things, but a lot of the things that I want to make because I made a list of possibilities, a lot of the things that I want to make, I already have materials for. 
I just need to make them. So one hour a week, which breaks down to about 10 minutes a day, which is completely doable. I want to work on decorations and at the beginning of the month, I will be using random number generator to choose which season. Um, they're numbered one through four. I can't remember which one starts it, but they're written down in my other notebook, <laughs> one through four. And I did the random number generator for this month and it picked winter. So for winter, my work in progress is the advent calendar. So this is what I'm using to um, to quilt it on. And you can see the stars this week, not stars, the snowflakes that the, um, the elves are doing a fabulous job on. Gabriel is very impressed with them. So I have this portion and then this portion. I'll be working on that for at least 10 minutes a day, usually more like 20, to be honest, um, until it's finished or the end of the month comes. And then I will not feel so guilty about packing it away if it's not finished. But I think that I'll be pretty close. I will probably have it all quilted down and maybe have started the binding by that point. We'll see. Who knows? I'm saying that like I know exactly how long it's going to take and I have no idea. But that is one work in progress. And then the other resolution goal thing is to spend one hour a week working on a work in progress that came into um, that came into 2016. Not really a work in progress, more like an unfinished object sort of thing. And I have 10 of them, which I will list for you, but I won't show you right now. I have the rug for my back porch, the one that I'm making from strips of fabric from shirts. It's blue and red, and there's a pink and purple fabric being added to it currently. Um, years ago, I started a quilt for Steve, and I... And I actually have it right here, what I have sewn together. So this is the top, the parts that are sewn together. It's, I don't remember what the pattern is called. I found it in a book from the library. Couldn't tell you what the book is. I checked it out when I was pregnant with Mara or right after I had her. I don't know, first several months of her life. That time frame, all of the quilt blocks are sewn together and I have them um, pinned together in stacks to be sewn into rows and then the rows be sewn onto the, the facing of the quilt. I just haven't been in a super sewing mood, but I've been, you know, I have it out now instead of hiding so that I can see it so I can be like, oh yeah, I should work on that. I also have um, the sweater for my sister, the Eyelet V cardigan that I started in November. So I'll get back to that at some point, probably. I don't know. It's all based on random number generators. So theoretically, I could end up working on just one project for the entire year, although I imagine that given that many hours, any given project would be finished. Let me finish with the list and then I'll talk about that. Um, the Dream Bird, which I started over a year ago, I think. Maybe not. Maybe. No, definitely over a year ago, but I don't think it's been a year and a half. Um, a Christmas Garland, which I don't know if I've shown you guys on the podcast or not. It was based off of a necklace that I saw in a book. You make a, um, a chain or an eye cord or whatever, and then you knit little beads and put those on. So I want to finish that. And that garland and is um, also a possibility for the holiday thing 
So if I finish the advent calendar before the end of the month, I will probably put a little bit of work onto that garland. I have the log cabin blanket that I started forever ago for my living room, which I haven't touched in, I don't know, a year. I have four spinning projects. The Mirla um, fiber art bat, the art bat, gourmet stash, um, horror cruxes, carnival bears from Hippie Penguin, and the painted tiger, um, the, the purple, the the yellow to pink to purple fiber that I'm spinning super thin. So those are all on the list. And I did random number generator and it picked for the month of January the Mirla Fiber Arts, the bat. So this is what this strip of the bat looks like. It's got all sorts of pretty things on the inside. It's got locks, it's got sparkle, it's got everything in the kitchen sink, but no cashmere, so that's good. And uh, I have a little fairy in the background, apparently. So this is what it looks like this week. I will put in a picture right here of what it looked like last time I worked on it. I have no idea how much, like, percentage-wise I have left on that spin. But if I finish, um, if I finish working on a work in progress during the month and have more than like three days left over, I will use random number generator to pick out a new project and, um, and that will not carry over to the next month. If I have three days or less, then I will use random number generator and that project will carry over to the next month. So that's my plan for the resolutions. Um, yeah, let me know what yours are. Philippa shared hers, which was to finish a blanket in last week's episode thread and her four blankets that she's working on are gorgeous. So go look at those in last week's episode thread. Um, I will see you next week. I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and strings. Bye.